I'm going to try and show you how to extract patient level data from a published kaplan meier curve using this very nice method from uh, Goyo and colleagues. It's good because they also provide R code for their algorithm, but perhaps it's uh, this R code perhaps is a little tricky to use without a bit of extra know-how. So that's what I want to try and share with you now. I noticed that um, Y and Royston did a similar thing for explaining how to use the algorithm uh, via Stata, uh, but I'm going to be going to be showing you how to do it with R. So suppose um, this is, for example, a, a kaplan meier curve that I want to extract the data from. The first step is to grab hold of this picture. And for that, I'm going to be using the snipping tool. Let's just save that. And then once you've done that, you then go to this web plot digitizer and this is going to allow us to grab hold of the coordinates for the curve. So I'll just load the, uh, the file that we just created and it asks me to align axes. So this means choosing two values on the X axis, say here and here, and two values on the Y axis, say here and here. So on the X axis, I went from zero to 26. On the Y, I went from 0 to 100, but I'm just going to leave that as 1, so I'm going to keep it on the probability scale. And then what you have to do, so say you want to capture the blue curve, you just have to click through it. So just click along here. As you can see I'm doing this very quickly, but you should really take some care over this. just want to grab hold of all of these coordinates. Just bear with me a second. Good. Let's rename this. Say arm one, and let's take a look at it. So you can see I got two columns here. The first column is the time, and the second column is the survival probability. And I'll download this as a CSV file. Now for the next step, I'm going to need R Studio. So let me just load that up and bring that in here. Okay, and I want to make sure I'm in the correct directory. So here are my downloads. And this file here, arm1.csv, this is the file I've just created. Let's have a look at it again. So here you see the, the two columns first column was the time, second column was the survival probability. I've noticed here that the very first survival probability is actually above one, so let's just quickly correct that. And the next step is to grab hold of this R code from the algorithm from Goyo and colleagues. So I'll just copy all of this and I'll bring it into our studio. Okay, so let's have a look at this code. Um, the code's quite lengthy, so it's, it's quite a lot of it, quite a complex algorithm. But essentially what it does is it takes a couple of inputs. So one of the inputs, a digiserve file, this is a, a file from the webplot digitizer, so such as the one we just created. And it also asks you to input uh, some information about the numbers at risk at risk at different time points. It then sort of goes through the whole algorithm and you see eventually what it does is it outputs IPD. So this is individual patient data. Um, so eventually, yeah, you get the IPD and, and this extra analysis here, 
I'm not interested in. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And my target will be to get hold of this IPD. Okay, so going back to the input. Um, yeah, let's split this up a little bit. So um, the first thing we have is, is loading a few R packages. So that's fine. I can do that straight away. Let's do that. This next section is asking for um, providing a, so, some paths and names of paths and files. I won't be using the same paths and files, so I'm going to uh, get rid of that as well. Here, total number of events. Um, if you knew the total number of events in the data set, then you could input that here. But in this case, I don't, so I'm just going to leave that as NA. And the ARM indicator, I'm just going to keep that as 1. Uh, so I can load those. Okay. So this next little section is, so here it's reading in the uh, the file that comes out of the webplot digitizer. Uh, but in my case, I have this, this CSV file and I only have two columns. So here you can see it's it's creating a variable t.s for the, the time column and a variable s for the survival column. So I'm just going to adjust this to reflect what I have. So I have a CSV file called arm1.csv and I don't have a header so okay and then my time is in the first column and survival probability is now in the second column okay so now I just need to look at this next little chunk here so here this is about asking about the, the numbers at risk. Um, so if I go back to my couple of Maya plots, so so far I've provided it with the, uh, the curve here, but the additional piece of information I have along the bottom is the numbers at risk at the start of um, various time periods. So I'm going to provide this information as well, but I'm not going to do it using a file so I'm going to I'm just going to put this in manually so let me just delete this so I'm not I don't have a pub risk file I'm just going to input these manually okay so t dot risk so this is the time so you can see here well, I'm going to ignore 26 months I'm just going to go from 0 to 24 months every two months and the numbers at risk risk I'm just going to input this manually so how can I do this it's uh, maybe so what did I have here I had 80 then 70 then 62 then 57 and 49 then 43 37 35 28 26 22 7 and 3 okay so the final thing i need to input are this these lower and upper so what's lower and upper well it, it's explained in the algorithm but essentially at this point I have uh, I have T risk let's have a look at T risk these are the time intervals where I have information about the number at risk and I also have T dot s so these uh, T dot s is the time points at which I have information uh, about the survival curve and so what lower is, it's kind of linking these two things together. So lower is um, the row number of TS, which is the earliest time point within each interval. So 
the first interval is between 0 and 2. So the first element of lower in that case would be would be row 1. So it'd be a 1 for, for the first row, because this is the first time point in TS, which is uh, bigger than 0. The second element of lower will be the first the row number of the first element in TS, which is bigger than 2. So you can see that would be a 7. And then I would need here an 11 for the first element, which is in the interval 4, 6, and so on. So to get that, what I need to do is I need to limp, uh, loop through t.risk. I need to look at which rows of, of TS are bigger than or equal to each element of T risk. And then I need to take the first of those. Okay. And then for upper, it's, it's very similar. So I need to find the uh, row number of TS, which corresponds to, to the last element in each interval. So for example, the first interval ends at 2, so I would need row number 6 as being the last element in the first interval. And then the second one, I would need row number 10 here because that's the, the largest one that's below 4 and so on. So that's very similar. I need to loop through t.risk and now I need to know which t.s are lower than x and I need to choose the maximum. Okay, except um, I need to start at I don't want to start at 0, I want to start at 2 in this case. So let me do it this way. So I'll get rid of the first element here. And then I'll just add something very large to the end. OK, let's just try that out now. So hopefully you'll be able to see. Let me just print t.risk again. Um, lower, upper, okay. See, the first interval is between 0 and 2, and that's between rows num row numbers 1 and 6. The second interval is between 2 and 4, and that should be between row numbers 7 and 10, and so on. So yeah, this is looking quite good. OK, so that's it. So now I can um, run the whole thing. And you see here it's printed out a, a patient level data set, IPD. So it's got 80 rows corresponding to the, the 80 patients um, in this arm. It's got three columns. So the first column is the survival time. The second column is an indicator of whether they have an event or not. So a one means they had an event. A zero means they were censored. And the third column is a treatment arm indicator, which, which we provided at the top of the code. OK, and that's that's it. So we can now sort of do what we, what we want with this uh, data set. So for example, um, what could we do? We could refit the Kaplan-Meier curve. So let's just try that. So I have IPD, uh, the first column, the second column. Can we just plot that?
Okay. Okay, so let's uh, let's see. So this, on the left here, you have the blue curve, the original, and on the right, you have the the recreated version um, using the um, extracted data. What's nice here is you see you've got the the confidence interval. So I think this is the big advantage here. If you're interested in say a confidence interval for the median, you can get that here even yet though you don't have the information here. I did. Um, before I um, started this video, I actually made um, a corresponding data set for the uh, the other arm in this uh, Kaplan-Meier plot. So let me just load that up here. So I save that as IPD 0 to R data. Okay. And here it is. So you can see here, I've done the same thing, created a, uh, a patient data set, individual patient data set for the other arm, which had 68, uh, 68 patients in it on the control arm. So now I could, I could combine these together So let's do that. Let's um, well, let's copy this code. Uh, but I'll yeah. PD zero. Okay, so here I've plotted both curves together. Maybe I should give these, uh, what, so what color were they? The original blue and red. <laughs> Wrong way around. Okay, so now I can look side by side at the um, the original and the recreated one. And you could also fit different models to this and, and, and do all sorts of things. So uh, hopefully you found that useful.